Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We give thanks to the Most High God for waking us up to see another day. That's first and foremost. You didn't have to get up. You could have been dead. Yes. So first and foremost, we give thanks to our Father for the breath of life waking us up this morning. You know, we did all things yesterday, whatever y'all did, and um, deep and woke up without any pain. My connection is unstable. Yeah, I said good morning. Um, I really need to I really need to, um, I don't want to say start because I kind of did start already, but it's not all the way that I wanted to start because as I keep telling you people, um, I'm just a sinner who is saved by grace. Grace and mercy is what's keeping me, nothing else. Because God love and because he doesn't lie, and because he's so gracious and so merciful, and when he said that nothing can separate you from his love, he means it. And he will talk to you. If you're going down the wrong road, he will let you know. He'll do everything in his power to get you to come back. But you have to remember that you have free will. You have free will. And he will never override your free will. If your free will is to do and otherwise than his will, if you choose to not follow his rules and regulation, it's your own free will. You have free will. A lot of people use their free will for garbage. And then they want to turn around and blame God. Yesterday, I kind of stuck. Um, I went to Rosa Parks, um, the visitor center, Harriet Tubman, actually, not Rosa Parks. And uh, I went there on the um, on March the 7th. That's my first visit to the Harriet Tubman. And um, I have two words for a sticker. One is on my Bible. One is on my Bible. Let me see if I can get closer so you can see her name. There you go, Harriet Tubman, all the way down at the bottom. I hope you can see that. I don't know why my hands are not stable. So you, um, this one on my Bible says, Harriet Harriet Tubman. Y'all know who Harriet Tubman is. Y'all know who Harriet Tubman is. And if you don't know who Harriet Tubman is, you should go check it out. Now, Harriet Tubman was one of those very spiritual person. She was a very spiritual woman. And one of the things right here she said on the Bible, the one that I the sticker that I have on the Bible, because it's two different. It's two different. Come on. What the heck? It's two different things, right? So on this one, that's what I'm telling you about the devil. He always finds his way into something. You understand? He's. You think the devil is ever going to leave you be, be freely about God to teach people? No, he's going to always be there to antagonize you. Do you think the devil stays out of church? Do you think that when 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 people are in the sanctuary, when they're praying, praising, worshiping God, where do you think the devil is? Outside the door, waiting for people to come out to antagonize them? No, he's right there, right there in the church. Why do you think you'd be sitting there in church and then the next thing, your mind drift off on food? Like you'd be wondering, hmm, what am I going to eat when I get out of here? And then you'd be there and then your mind drift off on your children probably be on your phone, all these type of things. What do you think that's about? <laughs> okay.
Okay, anyway, she said, Harriet Tubman here, and she said, I pray to God to make me strong and be able to fight. And that's what I have always prayed for ever since. Harriet Tubman, 1865. And on this one, on the bookmarker, she said, when I found I had crossed that line, I looked at my hands to see if I was the same person. There was such a glory over everything. The sun came like gold through the trees and over the field, and I felt like I was in heaven. I don't want a form of godliness. I want God, as the singer put in his lyrics. The Father has blessings with our names on it. He has miracles, healings, everything with our name on it is yours. If you're a child of God, you have an inheritance. If you are a child of the Most High God, you have an inheritance. You will not get it if you don't for, um, put yourself in a proper position. If you don't prepare yourself mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, you won't get what belongs to you. It will go right by you. You will be old and you'll be dead. You hear what they, the, the saying they said? Um, the cemetery is the richest place on earth because it has all of these talents, goals, and dreams that are buried with the people. That's the very sad truth. I don't want to be buried with mine. I don't want to die with what I know, with my talent. So even though right now I'm on this journey of making myself a better me, running away from bad habits and bad friends, bad circle. Well, I won't say they're bad friends, but they don't push me to where I want to go. So they can't be the type of friend that I desire because you're keeping me at this level and this level is not mine. My level is here. This is where the Lord called me to go. So I have to be mindful of my circle. And this is the th one of the things I've been running away from. So when I tell you I come here as an imperfect human being, I am literally telling you I am so imperfect. It don't make no sense. Like my butt is right next door to being whooped by the Lord. My butt is right there to be whooped because God has been speaking to me for years for years, telling me what to do. Go study the Bible. He said, go study the word. <laughs> Why? Why do you think he would tell you to go study the Bible, study the word? For his own safe, safety? For his own safekeeping? For his knowledge? No, he tells you to do that. Because when you study the Bible and you know the word of God, you will know how to live. You will know how to move. You will know how to walk. You will know how to eat, how to sleep, where to go, who to have friends with, who to marry, who to entertain, who not to entertain. And then what you will do for God in return, you will make his job not so much difficult as it is already being God. Imagine the president only take care of one country. God has to take care of the universe, not only earth alone, but the sky. The, the heavens, on top of the heavens and the earth. He has to take care of the fishes in the sea. He has to monitor all of these things. Humans, fishes, wild animals, aliens, if aliens exist. You know I'm saying? So he's, he's God monitoring all of these things. So when you do your part, studying what you should study and walking the way you should walk, then he doesn't have to run to come and bail you all the time for falling into traps. He doesn't have to come and rescue you all the time from falling into traps and walking into traps. So y'all pray for me while I pray for you. I'm just being the truthful. I'm just speaking the one truth, like I keep telling you, and I'm gonna tell you this for the rest of my days.
for the rest of my days. As long as my Lord have me here on earth, and as long as he give me a platform, it doesn't matter what platform I get. Whatever platform I get, I'm going to tell you all, people, human, children of God, the same thing. There's only one truth. How many parents do you have? How many parents do you have? How many mothers do you have? How many fathers do you have? How many mothers do you have? How many women gave birth to you? How many women was impregnated with you? How many men? How many sperms went to that egg to create you? How many sperms? How many sperms went to the egg to create you? How many men slept with your mother to create you? How many women was impregnated to have you? One, right? You have one mother, one father. One sperm is you that outran billions. Okay, one. Fertilize one egg to become you. So why is it that you think you have all these bunch of other gods? Why do you think that there's not one God? And is God that weak? Is God that weak that he would need another God to help him? He need tree gods and golden image gods and human gods to help him. Because he can't do it by himself. He's not God enough. Okay. Okay. Let me go ahead and sing this hymn. Last night I found um. Oh, I wonder which hymn I should sing. Sing this one, the one that I did mark unknowingly last night. What she sings with eyelids waking, lo, the power of heaven are shaking. Keep your lamps all trimmed and burning, ready for the Lord's return. And lo, he comes. Lo, Jesus comes, though he comes, he comes, oh glorious, Jesus comes to reign victorious, lo, he comes, yes, Jesus comes. Though the promise of the Savior, pardon sin and purchase favor, blood wash robes and grounds of glory, haste to tell redemption story, lo, he comes. Yes, Jesus comes. No, he comes, he comes, oh, oh yes. Jesus comes to reign victorious. No, he comes. Yes, Jesus comes. Now you sing the third standards. Because it's like five and my work, as y'all know, I want to get this ship going. So it's, I started a little early, late this morning. Kingdoms at their base are crumbling. Kingdoms at their base are crumbling. Hark his chariots, wheel are rumbling. Tell, oh, tell of grace abounding while the seventh trump is sounding. <sighs> lo, he comes. Lo, Jesus, my Lord, cometh. Y'all don't understand. I'm trying to drag me through the wilderness and drag you all with me. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get myself in line. I'm trying to run to go get some more oil to put in my lamp 
because my father says I need to be in love with him again. That's the message he sent to me over the weekend to one of my friends. He's not going to keep on talking to me because I know the truth. That's what he said to one of my friends. I know the truth and he's not going to keep on talking to him about me. And I need to love him, be in love with him the way I used to be. And he's not lying. Something has caused me to drift. I love him, but not the way I used to. I know him a lot because we've been walking all these years. But my eyes were on different things, and I didn't even know my eyes were on different things. I was walking with him, holding his hands, going this way with him, but yet still focused on other things, even though I'm walking with the Lord. So here comes a time that I have I can't do none of that no more. You can't you can't be in the balance, you know, warm, hot, you're hot, cold. No, it's either you're cold or you're hot. It's one out of the two. And you can't be walking with God and be focused on the, on other things this way or be looking behind you at what you left. That don't work. That don't help you. And he's coming. And he said when he's come, when he when he comes, he's gonna be weeping and mourning and gnashing of teeth. Meaning, hey, your teeth is gonna be knocking together. You know, um, this Bible, I got it out of my house, my dream house. My aunt owned the house at first. And long story short, I'll tell you about it one day. But yes, I got this Bible from it. And this is one of the treasures. This is the best treasure I got out of that house. That old back in the day study Bible. So look, I'm going to read this preface. The preface. I'm not even going to get, get into Genesis just yet. Just the preface. Just a bit of the preface I'm going to read. Okay. So we can see what 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 is it about God's words. Why people have to die for it. Why the devil try to trick you and tell you don't go ahead and go read it. Or when you do pick it up you get so tired and sleepy. Try to go do anything else. Try to go watch a movie. Go talk to your friends. Be on your phone. Be on Facebook. And see how long you can do that. When it comes time to spend time in God's presence. To read this Bible. We. We get distracted. We get lackadaisical. We get lazy. We procrastinate. That's because the devil is there. Pulling you away from it. The English Bible. The English Bible. This is the King James Version. The English Bible was developed over a period of approximately 200 years. There were several men who labored very diligently in the translation work. The, during their effort, these men were persecuted. They were ostracized, they were exiled, they were imprisoned, and even burned at the stake trying to translate the Bible. The established church of Rome had kept the scriptures from the common men for a period of 1,000 years. In the Bible, in the preface, the established church of Rome kept the scriptures from the common men, me and you, for a period of 1,000 years, which plunged the world into the dark ages. Without the word of God, the world plunged into the dark ages. It's here. It's in the Bible. William Tyndale. William Tyndale was born in 1494. 1494. William Tyndale. Believed in the authority of the scripture and did more in the way of translation of the English Bible than any other man. Tyndale was told a church bishop, no, Tyndale told a church bishop, I will make it possible for the boy who drives the plow to know how, to know as many scriptures as you do. He said, I will make it possible for the boy who drives the plow to know as many scriptures as you do. He spent the last 500 days of his life in a dark 
cold, lonely prison cell. On October 6, 1536, Tyndale was tried, was tied to a beam in the public square, then strangled and burned to death. His last prior was, Lord, open the king of England's eyes. The Lord answered that prior 68 years later. God's timing is not yours. God's thoughts are way above ours. God's timing is not like man. 68 years. God is all perfect and all knowing. Everything you do makes sense. So if he waited 68 years, it's a great, great reason why he did that. Tyndale was dead. Hmm? That was his last prior. And 68 years later, after his death, the Lord opened King James the first eye. King James the first, the Lord opened his eyes and he authorized the translation of the King James Version. In the morning, we will continue this reading. We will stop here for today. And we'll just meditate on these words. Plant it in the good soil of your heart so the enemy does not come and steal it away from you. It, don't let it go through one ear and come through the other. Okay? Don't be like those people, your ancestors, when, um, uh, what's his name? The, the guy that made the ark, Noah. Yeah, when Noah was making the ark, people were mocking him, laughing at him, and he was telling them, it's going to rain, it's going to flood, it's going to be a flood, it's going to rain, and, you know, God tell me to make this ark. And they laughed and they mocked. And they mocked and they laughed. And it's like, it's common sense that would have saved those people, you know. They didn't have to believe. They didn't have to know the truth. They didn't have to know God and believe God. They could have used their common sense. As what I'm trying to keep telling you, use your common sense. It will help you a lot. There's a reason God give it to you. And it's not very common. Common sense is not very common. Not everybody have it. Not everybody, everybody have it really and truly, but not everybody knows how to use it. So then it looks like they don't even have it because they don't know how to use their common sense. So common sense could have saved these people back in the day when Noah was making the ark. All they had to do all they had to do was like, they said it never, it didn't, it was a famine or whatever, or a drought or whatever. So it didn't rain for years. It didn't rain for years. So when Noah came talking about something, it's going to rain and it's going to rain nonstop and, you know, it's going to flood the earth. You know, it was, it was, it was beside what people could think or understand or comprehend. That was way out of their league of comprehension. First of all, they haven't seen rain in how many much years, much more to see rain that's going to flood. That was way out of their capacity of thinking. But like I said, common sense would save people if they had used their common sense. They should have looked at Noah and be like, hmm, okay. I don't know his God he's talking about, but I know he ain't no fool. He's never been a foolish man. He always does, does the right thing. I don't know if him as no this. I don't know if him as a liar. You know, I don't know he he as a thief. You know, he might get he might drink because they said that he he was um he drinks and stuff. But they don't know of him as a thief or a liar. You see, what I'm saying they should know that he doesn't make things up. They should see that. He wasn't drunk when he was saying what he was saying. It's not like he came staggering and be like, oh, God is going to flood the earth. No, he didn't do that. Was he drunk when he said that? So because, let's say, let's, let us let me show you how we people can be. Let me show you how we people can be. You will have this person in your community, right? And you know the person is, a, is an alcoholic. They're always drunk for the most part, Right? You always see them staggering, 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 smelling like pee, smelling like the whole entire liquor store. So one day, this person 
the first and only day they don't smell bad. They look sober. They're walking sober. They're talking sober. They told you, man, I haven't drink in like a day now, and I need to stop this because God is coming. And God say he's going to flood the earth. God say he's going to destroy the earth. So, man, I got to get myself in line. Common sense will help you. Common sense will help you. You know what the typical thinking we all will be thinking? And he's just a drunk. He don't know nothing. He's just a drunk. But if you use your common sense to be like, okay, you're not drinking today. Why is he not drinking today? I've never seen him and he's not drunk. This is the first day I'm seeing him and he's not drunk. And now he's decided to tell me about God. Obviously, that's not a drunken man telling you that. He's very sober. He's extremely sober. He's not telling you that in his drunkenness for you to mock him, for you to think that he doesn't know what he's talking about because he's underneath the influence. So common sense could have saved a lot of people. They could have looked at Noah and be like, well, I don't know if him is no liar. And I don't know if him is no deceiver or a trickster. I mean, I don't know of this and I don't know of that. So, I mean, that's what saved his family because they know him, regardless of the fact that he drinks and whatever, they know that he doesn't talk just to talk. So if people had used their common sense and looked at his lifestyle, they wouldn't have perished. This is what I'm trying to tell you. What I just read, read to you about William Tyndale, go look at it. Go look it up. I went and I searched it up myself, too, because this is not the first time I'm reading about William Tyndale. But I never knew about him until I got that Bible. That Bible is the one that introduced me to William Tyndale. And when I first saw it, I went and I did a Google search. And there is a person by the name of William Tyndale who was killed, who was burnt. It's a fact. It's not lying. So if they're going to kill Tyndale over the word of God, if they if they crucified and, and 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 ostracized and burned and you know all of these people who are trying to translate the Bible into English, then what is the problem? If it if it, if the Bible doesn't have power and the words of God is is not necessary, then people wouldn't be dead over it. They, your lives wouldn't be lost over it. But because there's value in it, oh, the devil will have you killed in a heartbeat trying to teach people. And me, I know he's after me. He coming here, trying to enlighten people hmm, about God and who God is and the one true God, telling you that there's only one way, one truth, one God, the Holy Trinity, one God, one way, one truth, one road to life. I know he wants to kill me. <laughs> you think he liked me doing this? You think he liked me telling y'all the truth? No, he doesn't. And he wouldn't mind if I just fall down the steps and bring it in. Or just have a car hit me or just have something happen to me. But guess what? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So as sinful as it might be, my father still have a covering over me. He still protects me and chill me and guide me. Because he knows that we are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. Because our history was stolen. Huh? Our history was stolen and destroyed. So lack of knowledge? keeps us bound and keep us down here at this level. I don't want a form of godliness. I want God. And I'm grateful the Lord has me start off like this. See my hair? I could have came to y'all all prestige. I could have put on my little makeup and my little eyebrow done, you know, because this is the world going to see this, you know, get my hair more neat. You know, get my locks going and my eyebrows done, you know, and my nails done because I'm coming to address the world. <laughs> you think I care about that? You think when God comes, he's going to be like, Felicia, you went on YouTube and you did not look good. <laughs> you did, your eyebrows weren't done and your hair, your hair. Why did you go to talk to people about me looking like that with your eyebrows not arched? And your hair looking like a mess. <laughs> Be wise. And pray for me. Please. While I pray for you. Oh Lord my God. When I'm in awesome wonder. 
consider all the works thy hands have made. I do see the stars and I do hear the rolling thunder that roll throughout this universe. We bless your name, O oh Lord, my God, this morning. And in all places and in all times, we give thanks and praises to you and only you, King of all kings, the Lord of all lords, the conquering lion from the tribe of Judah. There is none like you and there can never be none like you, O oh my Father. Ancients of days. There's none like you. There's no other God like you. You're God of all gods. Beside you, there is none. So I ask that you will have your way, have your dominion on this earth, O oh Lord. Have your way in the life of your people, O oh Lord. Protect all the things that belong to us, your people, O oh Lord. Continue to watch over us, Father. We bless your name. We give you thanks. You are awesome, God. You are awesome. You're extremely awesome. Your mercy and your grace is beautiful. Your mercy and your grace is just lovely. It's the sweetest thing I've ever tasted, Father. And I'm so grateful for it, Lord. Blessed be to your name, O oh, my one true God, my Father, my King, my, and my Lord, the God of my ancestors. I bless your name. Please continue to bless all who is watching, O oh, Lord, my God. Please continue to heal them from all things. Please continue to protect them and provide for them, O oh, Lord. And Father, help that whatever I may fail, I'm not asking you this morning, that you will fail not to grant it unto me. These are not the mercies I do ask in your humble and merciful name, for Christ's sake. Amen. Have a good day, people. Have a good day, my viewers, my viewer. <laughs> I love you. Thank you. Have a blessed day. Please like and share. Please subscribe. You ain't even got to like it. It's not my truth. I don't care if you like it or not. It doesn't matter to me. I told y'all before, I'm not here to babysit your feelings. I'm not here to entertain you. I'm here to offend you in the righteous way. So I'm not begging for no one to like any of these videos. It's on you. You have free will. Mm -hmm. But what I'm asking for you to do is to share it with your friends and your family. Don't be selfish and don't come and eat just for yourself. Don't come and fold your stomach and let other people perish. Because there are people out there that will need it more than you. So subscribe so you will know when I have something out. And um, please do share the video. I'm not looking fame or fortune from no one on earth. I already have it. I don't need YouTube to big me up and make me be known. I'm very talented, extremely talented. I write songs. I write books. You see this little thing right here? I write books. There's a story that I've been working on for years, and the devil has been trying his best. But God is like, you're not going to let go. I've been writing this story for years, a book. Okay? And I know it will be a number one seller. I know it will be. So I'm not looking for subscribers and shares and stuff because I want to be popular among who? Humans? <laughs> I don't want the world to love me. I, I, would, I, I really would love for the world to hate me. You see, if you love me, the world, if you love me, then that means I'm doing something wrong. So I want y'all to hate me. Does that mean I'm doing something right in the sight of the Lord? And if the world hate me, then I'm doing something right in the sight of the Lord. That's all that matters to me. Y'all don't have my salvation. Y'all not going to judge me. I'm not going to sit in front of YouTube owner or the subscribers and they're going to judge me. It's not y'all. It's my God who's going to do that. So I'm not begging for a subscription and I'm not being feisty either about it. I'm just telling you the truth. Okay. I'm not being feisty because people need to hear the message. People need to know. Do not be selfish and keep it for yourself. And don't look at me as a little man. No. Yeah, man. Sometimes men are like talk to people because everything you got to break down to them. Do not look at me like just a little man and you're not going to do your part. I told you what your part is. I'm doing my part. My part is to come and speak it. That's my part. Come and speak. Your part 
share it. So don't do your part. Everybody has their work and everybody is going to get their pay. Everybody's going to get their pay. You understand? So even if you don't want to share this video, go talk to the people. You understand? The field is there and the laborers, the workers, they're very few. So please be a worker and go and talk to God's people. Okay? I love you. I love you with the love of Christ. I love you with the love of Christ always. Mm -hmm. Have a very, very good day. Mm -hmm.